looking at the role of the digital itself, taking it seriously in terms of its genres, formats, the shape of the screen, the cost of the device, who made the device, all these things that I'm going to call below the waterline, meaning they don't appear in many um, earlier studies because they lead inevitably to women and people of color. How much more generative would we be if we didn't have to have spent the last 15 years of this just like proving to people that Black folks are online or proving to folks that we have capacities? And so that provocation to me lends itself well to this other way of conceptualizing our work, these different kind, this different way of asking questions that doesn't begin in deviance, that doesn't begin in like proving ourselves. Black folk have made the internet a black space whose contours have become visible through sociality and distributed digital practice. One of my followers called this the black Twitter stimulus package, right? <laughs> While decentering whiteness as the default internet identity. What does it mean if we think about black innovation, not as the creation of new commercialized techno-scientific gadget to um, exploit blackness, but using techno-scientific infrastructure to support and sustain Black life. How do we get to that space of support, whether it relies on the systemic or not? And how do we get outside of that space of commerce? It like relies on Black cool. It wants us to go back into this idea of the commercial and what we can purchase and buy and get versus how we support each other and what we're actually, like the pathways we're actually trying to make that are not only the facade of success, but defining successes for and within ourselves. Thinking about these webs and networks of care um, among communities, how might we indoctrinate bots in the ways of crypt cultures? What might it mean to rather punnily disable mental health bots? And what models might we reimagine for online peer support communities?